Corneal incision contracture or a wound burn occurs as a result of thermal damage to the collagen fibers in the sclerocorneal tunnel due to excessive heat exposure and is a complication that is sometimes seen during phagoemulsification. Let's understand how it should be addressed. Now more often than not, I've seen wound burns especially in cases wherein we are dealing with a very hard cataract or you've got a student who's operating who's going to take a very, very long time to complete the case. So high levels of phaco power with prolonged phaco time is what I've seen is the combination that ends up with a wound burn more often than not. So let's see this first case and let's look at how we managed it. Let's move on to watching this case. This is a patient with a grade 3 plus nucleosclerosis and we've performed a direct chop and the nuclear emulsification seems to be going quite smoothly. But let's see what we notice as we get the phaco probe out of the eye. Now here's what you can see. Now this is what a mild wound burn looks like. You can see there's a slight white charring of the roof of the tunnel as well as a splaying open of both the edges of the tunnel. Now at the end of the eye oil implantation, I hydrate the wounds and I look for an adequate closure of the wound. And what I'm actually trying to look for is, am I going to have both the lips of the wound appropriately opposed at the end of the surgery? I use a cotton bud to press the ends of the wound down together and I'm quite happy with the end result that I have achieved. So in this particular case with this very mild wound burn, there's nothing more I'm actually going to do. When I drop some blue dye over the surface of the wound, you can see that there's absolutely no wound leak. And I expect this wound to close perfectly without any issues postoperatively. Let's now move to watching the second case. In this case, we find a slightly more advanced burn. Let's see how we managed it. This is a patient with an advanced nucleus sclerosis and a small pupil. I performed a direct chop technique for the nucleus management. I worked with the 2.2 mm incision with the corresponding sleeve for the tip of the correct size. And when you're working with a hard cataract with such a small pupil, the most ideal technique does seem to be the direct chop, which you can see me performing here. I have a power of about 70% linear for the direct chop in a longitudinal mode. And for the fragment emulsification, I move to the ozil with the IP on. Notice how I'm struggling a little to get the first fragment out. It takes me a few minutes to actually be able to hold on to that fragment and bring it out. So this, of course, is also increasing my phaco energy delivered into the eye, which is certainly more than what I would normally have used. Finally, after being able to get a good hold of this fragment, I'm able to bring it out. And now once I've done that, the rest of the nucleus emulsification doesn't take too much time. However, I am delivering significant amount of energy to emulsify these fragments. With significant ease thereafter, I'm able to bring each fragment out, downsize and emulsify it. Now let's look at the wound at the end of this nucleus management you will actually see that we have created a significant wound burn in this case. Now, how do you know it's a wound burn? You can actually see a charring of the roof of the tunnel. You can see a fish mouthing of the wound edges. And this makes me realize that I have a significant wound burn here. Now, how am I going to address it? I proceed with the implantation of the IOL and as you can see here, the rest of the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber and around the IOL is also being removed. At the end of the visco wash, I will then proceed to hydrating the wounds and re-evaluate the status of this wound burn. There is a significant gaping that I can actually see in both the lips of the incision and if I were to leave this alone, even if I had a watertight eye, I'm going to end up with a significant astigmatism and a difficulty in resurfacing the eye optimally with tears. After instilling a drop of Blurex on the surface of the eye, I can see that I do have a watertight incision. But that really is not the problem here. I do not wish to have a resultant induced astigmatism caused because of the wound burn, nor do I want an ocular surface that is not regular. Therefore, in this particular case, I choose to take an interrupted tenor buried nylon suture. This is what you'll see in this part of the video. A single radial teno nylon suture is taken, first piercing the corneal lip and then coming out through the scleral edge. The suture is then tied with a 311 knot.
the knot is tightened appropriately in order to be able to achieve an optimal closure of both lips of the womb. At the end of this, the suture ends are cut and the suture ends are buried. This is the end result that we have achieved, an optimal closure of this main incision. This suture can be very easily cut post-operatively under a topical anesthetic on the slit lamp about a week after surgery. I hope you did find this video tutorial useful. Thank you.